How do we know when to choose a high wing, a mid wing, or a low wing for our design? In this video we will look at some of the pros and cons of each wing placement, so that we can decide the best position of the wing for a particular aircraft design. A lot of things need to be considered when selecting the wing vertical position. Let's go through them one by one. High Wing Design Most military transport aircraft have high wings so that the fuselage can be placed close to the ground. This allows the loading and unloading of cargo without special ground handling equipment. In a high wing, the engines are well above the ground. This protects the engines and propellers from debris and foreign object damage on unimproved fields. Also, the wingtips are not as likely to strike the ground in a high angle of attack roll position. As the ground clearance is not an issue, the landing gear can be made shorter and hence less heavy. High wing designs allow the addition of struts, which lower the weight of the wings, but they do increase drag. In this design, the wing box is carried over the top of the fuselage, rather than through it, which helps in reducing weight. If the wing had passed through the fuselage, the fuselage would have been stiffened around the cutout, which would have added weight. High wing designs can employ huge flaps providing a high lift coefficient for short takeoff and landing capability. As the wing is not close to the ground, a high wing prevents floating of the aircraft due to ground effect. Floating is undesirable as it causes difficulty in landing and touchdown. On smaller planes, this configuration provides a great field of view downwards. Entry into high-wing aircraft is usually as simple as opening the door and getting in. In this type, gravity-fed fuel system can be used, which eliminates the need for pumps. Fueling a high-wing aircraft is a drawback, because the fuel tanks are generally in the wing with the fuel caps on top of the wing. This requires a step ladder, which may not be available at all airfields. Larger airplanes solve this issue by featuring fueling points in the fuselage, where fuel is pumped under pressure. That option is impractical for GA aircraft that operate off airfields that do not have such equipment. As the landing gear is attached to the fuselage, the fuselage must be strengthened to support the landing gear loads. This increases fuselage weight. Also, an external blister is used on such designs to house the landing gear, which increases drag. Flattening the bottom of the fuselage for the purpose of storing cargo also adds weight to the design. On smaller aircraft, high wing design blocks upward visibility and visibility in a bank turn. Mid wing design. If the fuselage is roughly circular and fairings are not used, then mid wing placement provides the least amount of drag. On the other hand, high and low wing arrangements must use fairings to attain acceptable interference drag with a circular fuselage. There is some ground clearance benefit, and this can be seen on many fighter aircraft. This allows for the attachment of armament. This design is probably best suited for aerobatic performance. In a low wing, dihedral is required for adequate handling but the dihedral acts in the wrong direction when the plane is upside down. This is why midwing is frequently chosen for aerobatic airplanes to ensure neutral roll stability. The major disadvantage of midwing design is that the wing carry-through box cannot be used in cargo or passenger planes. Wing carry-through box is usually lighter than other structural solutions like ring frames. In spite of this, the configuration has been used in a few aircraft, for instance, the 10-passenger West Wind business jet and the six-seat Piper Aerostar. Another exception is the Hansa jet, which has forward sweep to compensate for the placement of the midwing in the aft part of the fuselage. Low wing design. In this type, the landing gear can be stowed inside the wing. The landing gear is usually attached to the wing box, which is a strong structure already. Other ways are to retract the landing gear in the wing fuselage fairing or in the nacelle. This eliminates the need for an external blister and thus reduces drag. Due to the higher placement of the fuselage, lesser aft fuselage upsweep is required. This is beneficial as it reduces drag. In most low-wing airliners, the wing carry-through box passes through the fuselage and splits the cargo compartment only. The passenger compartment is on top of the cargo compartment and remains uninterrupted. The upward visibility is great in low-wing designs. However, the downward visibility is poor in this design. Fuel pumps are required in this type. Small aircraft with low wings require a reinforced walkway on the wing and an external step that usually remains exposed to the airstream. In a high wing design, struts are subjected to tension forces in normal flight, whereas struts on low wing aircraft would be in compression, exposing them to a buckling failure. A low position of the wing may increase the risk of an accidental ground strike when operating off unprepared fields. More bush planes are of the high wing configuration than the low wing. As the fuselage must be placed an adequate distance above the ground for propeller and engine clearance, longer landing gears are required, which adds weight. Usually, special ground handling equipment are necessary for loading and unloading. That is why such designs mostly operate from established airfields. 
In summary, we can see that a lot of things need to be considered while selecting the wing vertical location. If you found this video informative, please give it a like. For more videos on aircraft design, subscribe to the channel. You can watch these videos next for more on aircraft design. Thank you for watching.